Gallywag. Uh, a little uh, Thin Lizzy playing for you. Oh, that's good. Boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. I think if we sing it too much that we have to actually give them something. So we don't Ooh. want to do No, 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 no. We change the words, so. though. The guys are back on Discord. I was late though too because I was trying to. My thought was that I'll try the app again to see if I could get my interface to work with it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No bueno. Still doing the choppy thing. Ta 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 ta. You know. Mm. So what's up in your world now that you're back? Oh, well, yeah, I got back last night about. 830 or so so nice 11 hour drive uh only stopped twice slept in a little bit today and uh got up and had to mow the grass that's the worst part about like going on vacation this time of the year like i, sh- I mowed like the day before we left and then i come back you know we're gone just you know what eight days come back and it's like i swear it's like a foot high Okay, maybe not foot high, but it's like ridiculous. So it's like I got to go out and, and cut it. Something that you don't know know about or have to worry about with your your new house. Yeah, I didn't hear any of that because it <laughs> oh, said I was connected, but I wasn't. And uh, but but then I disconnected and re rejoined, and you're yeah. there. So maybe that's an option until I <laughs> until uh. I. All I have to do is go get my interface. Yeah, and, like, and everything will be fixed. Maybe. I, Maybe. I, well, we could hope. It should be work and not work. And... As long as it's through the app, I would assume that it would be better. I, didn't, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, at least the connection would be better. But, yeah, I was supposed to have an interview with Kristen Carney which she was on a podcast called Ask Women. Okay. And then I think I started listening to True Crime Garage. And then at some point, the weird, creepy messages I was sending her, I think she realized, like, oh, he's, he, you know, he has a show. He's not just messaging me for no reason. And so... <laughs> Then she was like, hey, how how do I get a shout out on your show? And I was like, well, why don't you have me on your show? And then I yeah. can tell people, hey, check out this interview that I did with Kristen Carney. So, so what is her show actually about? Just. Oh, that's crazy. Well, but... well, her her show is called Mentally Chill or it okay. was called Mentally Chill. And they had a handful of episodes where there was two co-hosts. It was her. And I can't remember. So there are two. Uh, they weren't friends, like longtime friends. It was like she's out in LA being a comedian and being on other podcasts. And she wanted to start another podcast other than Ask Women because that was going well. And she, Kristen Carney, also would be like the fill in girl for any Adam Carolla show. So, okay. Yeah. So anytime they needed a fill in news girl, Chris and Carney would be on it and she's super funny. She's really into Seinfeld and really into Larry David. So like her humor, I just really find funny. So she started this show and it was called mentally chill, but it would have a parenthesis around the ill part. And they were talking a lot about mental health and their struggles with depression and stuff like that. So, and also trying to be humorous about it. So I listened to a couple episodes because I'm a fan of hers, but it's hard. I have a couple podcasts that I try to listen to on a weekly, you know, every week I try to listen to a handful of them. Um, It's really hard to keep up when you're producing as much content as our show is. Plus now me and you will do these live chats. Oh yeah. Pookie bear. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, But I don't know how many episodes in. It wasn't that many. 
Well, now I got to tell the funny part. Well, it's not the funny part. It's a little shameful. This would go on the wall of shame. But I listened to a couple of her, the newest episodes. I, I knew that she had a co-host at one point, but now all the shows were just Kristen. So then it was um, <laughs> it was one of those things where I'm listening to the new episodes and I'm going, as I'm listening, I think maybe I got through two or three episodes and she would like interview people here and there. And I think Kristen's great by herself, but I also thought, hey, why don't you get like some co-host and maybe I could be that co-host because it's a subject that I care about and I think me and Kristen would get along and I think it would be uh, kind of a passion project, but I think we got enough of a uh, listenership that people would check out a weekly show if I was on one with somebody else. Yeah. And so then I said, Hey, you need a co-host and I would like to be that co-host. And then basically she told me I was an asshole because the first co- co-host actually uh, took her own life. Oh, so I felt like a complete asshole. And then I went back and listened to all the beginning episodes. And then she did a whole episode that's very powerful about how she met this person and they became friends and they started doing a show together, but she didn't know her super well. And you're doing a show about mental illness. And obviously the, you know, obviously the topic of suicidal thoughts has probably came up. And then to have your co-host take their own life, I mean, it's pretty, um, it was out in LA working and now she moved back to, uh, I believe Buffalo. I think she's from Bo- Buffalo, but I also really like that. I love any podcaster or any content creator that is just doing it from their hometown. Like we've had so many offers to move to LA to do TV bits or be voiceover people for cartoons and and you know focus has always been no we're just doing the show and this is the best way i know how to do it and yeah you know why would i leave my hometown to do that he 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 does not want to be even somewhat famous even when i jokingly say hey well nick you're you know podcast famous he's like no um I'm not, <laughs> you know, he, he has, uh, he's, he's weird. Cause, uh, there's part of him when you meet Nick, where you think that he thinks he's a rock star, but that's just his natural, natural personality. And then there's a part of him that is really endearing. Uh, but he has, it's, it's this weird thing where he does, he doesn't want to be even pseudo famous, um, and doesn't even act like it, but he's always kind of acted it that that way like he his time is important to him um, yeah which is you know which i think is refreshing i mean i have a hard time saying no to anything and that's why i'm here talking right now to you because i can't say, <laughs> i can't say no to you you can always say no man I gave, you, I, I gave you the option i was like hey you know well, we can mix it it's fine we say seven yeah no, I was I mean, gonna say though. I mean, we said like, seven tonight, but I'm saying, did we say seven? Like, no, no. Okay. Did we? Did we actually never set a time. And uh, no, and actually, well, well, two things I'm gonna say real quick. Back about Nick, real quick, and going back to your band days. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, even though he was the, the lead screamer, singer, <laughs> yeah, li- lead singers, yeah, not uh, really a he singer, was but... never. He was never. I never got the the vibe from him that he he was bigger than the room. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, but he would he, show up late. Oh, so he was <laughs> he was bigger than. Yeah, the but room. He, but that that's the thing. He didn't show up late because he was a rock star. He showed up late because he didn't want to have to sit around and talk to all the other bands about yeah. like nothing. It was always the same conversation. Where that got annoying. Oh, yeah, I, you know. I can see that. And yeah, let's be honest, you guys played with a lot of the same bands, you know. Yeah, uh, we, you know, whether, whether it was at Al Rosa or Newport or wherever you guys were playing. I mean, you guys had a little circuit of you know probably three or four bands that you you had played with a lot. Yeah. So you you know eventually you're gonna 
you know, you're going to just be recycling conversations. And I think that's what he got annoyed with. And I hated some of that stuff too, you know? Oh. No, I get it. I completely get it. But uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I did offer to, to nix the show today because I didn't, uh, you guys recorded today. So what was the yeah. deal with, uh, with going in and uh, recording today? Yeah, so normally we will record uh, Monday and Tuesday for the most part. But uh, I think most people, a lot of that stuff is either like pre-production stuff. So when it sounds like, oh, well, we always like to say, we'll see you in the garage tomorrow. But we're recording all that in one day. But I'm going into the studio uh, to start working on my third singer-songwriter EP. If you haven't checked that out, go to captainfathands.com and there's music there. Yeah, I'm starting my third EP and I have a guy coming into town to help me and he could only do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And so okay. uh, Nick, Nick was kind enough to move it over. And w- this is a weird week because I think I was telling you last show, I, and I'll give this away. Okay, how about a show of hands if anybody wants me to give anything away for what's happening this week? Ooh, you're gonna it's tell all him. Roth. You can't tell him about the interview. Well, no, I can't tell him about the per. Yeah, I gave this away on the last show, but so the so the first case is very interesting. It's a missing person case, but not like the typical missing person case. And we we're actually able. Well, well, actually, what happened was we were contacted by this detective that's been working on this case. And he's getting nowhere. He's just keeps hitting dead ends. But he knows that somebody knows something out there. So he reached out saying, hey, I know you have an audience. Maybe they'd be willing to share the information that he shared with us to their friends and on social media. And so it's a, it's a there was a big twist in this missing person case. And that's episode one of this week. It's happily entitled i think it's going to be titled the invisible man okay so main show episode one the invisible man the the invisible man okay at least that's what i think you know this is how much time i don't have this week is i'm actually eating dinner while we while we do the show (laughs) um i don't know the titles always sometimes i actually help create the title but i think it's going to be called the invisible man which kind of makes sense and kind of doesn't i have to listen to the episode but i think it's good because it's mainly us talking about the case but we're actually able to sit down and get decent recording like we use the lapel mic but a decent um yeah um yes lady i do have to eat to keep this weight on me but um so it's good. And then the second interview, Nick was able to interview somebody that he's a huge fan of. I have not heard it yet, so we'll edit that tomorrow. And normally we do like, sometimes we'll do some of the ads like on one day or do a couple of the intros on one day so we can talk about just the case and not have to do any of the, the busy work. So that's not what we're doing this week. We did all of show one today and we'll do all of show two tomorrow and so i'm really looking forward to the interview that nick had with somebody he's a big fan of and um of course he was going around saying this is going to be a great week and a couple of his friends said who did you interview and he said so and so and they said who's that (laughs) (laughs) but i think if you're a true crime fan you you will know who we're interviewing Uh, no absolutely Hopefully it's good. I mean, Nick did it, so it could suck. You know, I mean, all my interviews are awesome. They're great. Well, your last one was really good. Let's I thought my last one was good. It's pretty oh. surprising, too, because my dad liked it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he was like, yeah, he doesn't like anything you do. No. He called me fat like three times yesterday. That's oh. good. Um, speaking of interview, I did, I did listen to your interview with Mike Sappho. 
Mike Saffo yeah. podcast last night at well, like one thirty in the morning when I couldn't sleep. How was it? Did it put you to sleep? No, I I actually stayed up and listened to the whole thing, and then as soon as it was done, I turned it off and I uh, and went to bed. I thought it was really good. Um, I think in, but you know what's weird? He was a he was a great oh, yeah. interviewer, right? Yeah, I thought he was great. Great voice. The, Y'all know, great, absolutely. But then, like listening to it, like I can't, I can't help but critique, like production. So it was well, weird because it's because it's like it started. Uh, it basically just you know you you're listening to a Mike Saffold, whatever, right? right? And then it ended by going, okay, bye, or whatever it was, you know. And that oh, was there's it. no outro. No. No. So I was just like that. It's just it was just weird. I'm like, yeah, you need to. You need to have an outro or something to it. But it was like one of those things where I could hear like from how he's interviewing and his interaction with you. I was like, you know what? This could be a really good thing. He just needs to kind of massage it a little bit. I don't know how, how to put it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's just like us. Like we, we decided that, that, you know, we spent 200 bucks on headphones. We're not getting paid to do the, the live chats. We spend 200 bucks on headphones. You spend money on a microphone, spend money on headphones. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting paid to do this. And then we decide that, ah, oh, listening back to the audio, the headphone audio sucks. Okay, well, what if we do this? And then we fix that. Well, now yeah. the, the problem is sometimes I get disconnected. So when I get disconnected, that it makes the quality of the show suck. And then you got to think, it's just like when we do an interview and I re-edit the interview to try to mm -hmm. take out us. It's a natural thing, and if you heard it one time, no big deal. But what if somebody listens to the show twice, or what if they listen to? It, and it's kind of like the the Tyler Davis case. Like I tried my best to edit us and edit space, but some things like she said like a lot, and mm -hmm. I think she said literally a lot. But some of those things you can't fix. And, and post or it gets to the point where it's like okay well this will take me another three hours to do if i edit everything so you just kind of have yeah. to get back but it's just like even with the chris and carney interview we're using a program called um what is that do about it i don't use it that often nick uses it uh or something like that um Encaster. That's what it's called. Okay. And so it records from my microphone and records from her microphone. So when you go to edit it down, it's both, you know, high, like preamp, nice mic quality. So, yeah. Which, you know, which I think what would be cool too is I, I love the live chats, but I, when you were saying, hey, let's get together, maybe we should talk Bundy, the Bundy movie. Um, I was like, oh, maybe you should just come over and we just record it. And then. Oh, and then yeah. Put it. Hey, thanks. Uh, Kitty Go Go said I did a good job on the interview. Yeah. Laura, my first. It, wait, Laura, is this your. Laura M., is this your first episode? Like the live episode? Is this your first chat room? Hey, lady. Yes. Welcome, Laura. Paging Mr. Herman. I'm just trying to give a couple shout outs. I see Cherry's in the house. Amanda's in the house. Ace. Ace Flower. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, <laughs> calling her Ace Flower. Yeah, we definitely got some new people in here tonight. So I, I did some deep dives on this um, Bundy uh, movie. Deep dives. So you're either going to like know everything that i know or you're going to be shocked about how much i know about this movie how it was made oh you went to the bathroom again i did <laughs> <laughs> always good to see jay tall yeah. all the time because i think he's sweden super, right super late or we super got, early think, yeah we got we've got three well, let's see. Uh, I know there's two from Sweden in right now, and the third might not be here. I think Jay Tall looks like he could be like the uh, uh, 
a twin of me, but like the better looking twin. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Just the profile pick. I mean, he might not look anything like me, but I'm just saying like the profile pick. It's like, wow, that that's is one. Well, and I posted this thing on Instagram and let me just read it to you so you can. Yep. I got a little preachy. Sometimes I get a little preachy. I saw a couple people post and they weren't clearly stating that they didn't understand that Bundy killed these women. But the whole movie yeah. kind of sets to the point of did he do it? Did he not do it? And then obviously there's there's some pretty blatant clues at the end. And if you don't get it from the end, then you're just not going to get it. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. There are many aspects to it that I actually really, really, really liked. The ending, yeah. Which, but, spoiler uh, alert, the ending actually did not happen, but whatever. Right. It's a movie. Right. It's a movie. Yeah. A well, movie. also, like, I think they can, I think they also put two characters together. I don't think the girl that wrote Stranger Beside Me ever had a relationship with them. Anne Rice? Yeah. No. No. And so they put those two together because. Oh, Anne Roll, were... not Rice. Anne Rice is a vampire lady. Anne Roll. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they put the girl that worked with him in the crisis center which wrote the movie Stranger Beside Me, which if you notice the first line that that, that girl comes into mo the movie, she says, hey, stranger. And he's like, yeah, we yeah. work. And then Ted was like, we work together at the crisis center. Well, the girl that worked at the crisis center ended up writing a book about him called um, a Stranger Beside Me. And then the girl that became his girlfriend actually wrote a different book. So... <laughs> I, I'm just going to start by saying I think it, the movie was worthwhile. It's a worthwhile yeah. to watch. You know, you're not going to end the movie and go, I wasted my time. I would say because the ending is so good, three bottle caps out of five. Yeah, because if I remember correctly, so Liz Kendall, also named, her, well, her real name, Liz, was it Col Colfer? Something like that, yeah. whatever it is. So, if I remember correctly, so her book was The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy. Yes. Which was just, it was basically, uh, it was it was published by a very small book company out of Seattle. And the book was actually very, very short. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I'll say it's, it's a very short book. It's not, um, heavily detailed so yeah you, they would have to use other sources in order to fill out a what was it, an hour and 45 minute movie two hour movie okay. but but there was an actual book written by his long-term girlfriend i believe as well so i think it comes from her story more than the crazy girlfriend at the end story but i think it's a combination and I think there's probably a little bit of the Stranger Beside Me book in this as well. But what I wrote was, well, I took a picture of Bundy and then I put across his eyes, just so we are clear. I'm I, said, looking at it now here. I said, Bundy did kill those girls and probably a lot more. There is no way he was that dreamy because that's one of the things about the movie that I, was stupid. Every girl he walked by, they like goo goo ga ga eyed over him. And that's not the case. I have some, no. I have really, a couple of really good looking friends that don't get that many looks. Um, Think about Ted, Ted Bundy, right? He wasn't a bad looking guy, but what he, what he did was he made himself look vulnerable, right? So he used the cast or the crutches, whatever it might be. So, you know, because he wasn't a, hideous looking guy people were more will willing to help him out it's not like they were going oh my god this guy's so hot i'm okay. gonna go into his car with him that's not how it worked oh, and how it worked in real life was maybe he was okay looking and that might get his foot in the door i also think he went after women that he thought like 
they're lower than his league. So then they're like, oh, he's dreamy. Yes, he's super manipulative. Let's get that out of, you know, but I think this whole notion of him being so dreamy is that when he got on TV, he was one of the first cases that was televised. So he got this huge female following, but that's because he was on TV. And they weren't showing the murders and stuff. So, you know, but I think um, before all that, I think they blow up how much, how attractive he was. No, I agree. I mean, he was on TV. He had, I mean, let's be honest, he had a personality. Um, Well, he's the lawyer. So when you're the lawyer, you're the star of the show. There's There's tons of guys on TV that, are not that great looking that become heartthrobs. Yeah. I mean, even before the trial, you even have the, uh, the pseudo press conference in the, the hallway when they, he was given the, uh, uh, the indictment papers, right. In front of the, in front of the TV cameras. And they let him like basically walk around the hallways, you know, basically giving up his own press conference to, you know, a very large, group of press that were standing there waiting. Oh, well, Kitty said that uh, he wasn't nearly as smart as he thought he was. No, but I don't think most people are as smart as they think they are. He was obviously smart enough to, I mean, the the judge even said in real life, it would have been an honor to witness you perform in court. Yeah. I think he was probably pretty good at that stuff because he's such a manipulator. But, so yeah, I didn't like that part. So I said, um, get back to this guy. But Bundy did kill those girls and probably a lot more. There was no way that he was that dreamy. Yes, he was smart and probably charming. Most liars are. Bundy is a piece of shit, and it's a pity we could only kill him once. Rant over, which is not true. I lied. And I was hoping that somebody would call me out on that because that was intended. Because here we are now. I was like, rant over. And then I said, real men are not afraid of strong women. Now, that part, right? Real men are not, uh, you know, afraid of strong women. That didn't have anything to do with the movie other than the, the, the fact that I think a lot of these victims probably put a way bigger way bigger fight than they make it out to be. And most of them were ambushed. And I would love to see Bunny in just one fair fight with any of these women. They probably would have ripped his head off. Um, as I think he was, I think he was pretty weak as far as just a person and, and all that stuff. But yeah. So then I, <laughs> then people, it do, doesn't matter if you say something pro female or anti female, you get, you know, pretty bad um, comments either way. But overall, I liked the movie. I thought it was, I get three bottle caps out of five. Um, now, do you want to start doing some deep dives into the movie? Yeah. So, I mean, actually, I think, um, I'm actually looking through some of some of your, some of the comments here, and I know that there Read are people. Me some. That, what was that? Read me some. Uh, Michael Gorman, you liked a Netflix movie? Question mark. I thought it was awful. Nah, it wasn't awful. Uh, I don't think it was awful. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I just saw this one. James Hetf- James Hetfield was the only redeeming quality of the movie. How the hell did I miss him? It's a cop. I know, but I completely missed him. He's in like three scenes. He uh, pulls him over, arrests him. Then okay, he... wait, which which one? Which time in Utah? First time. In okay. Yeah, go back and watch it. This is like the All beginning right, of the movie. But hold on, I'm eating. No, you're fine. Read another no, it... comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not even going to watch the movie. Guarantee some loser will be inspired by Dreamy Ted Bundy. Possibly. Okay. I can see that. You mean Zach Efron? 
Zac Efron. Oh, first of all, Zac Efron obviously didn't lose enough weight. He should have because he had too much muscle on him. Yeah, yeah. Good actor. I thought he did a great job playing Ted. He was also one of the directors or one of the writers. Or producer. So, or Yeah. Yeah, it was something um, which is great that he's doing more than acting. I think that guy had more to offer. And uh, he was even saying that. And like you look at Christian Bale that played like an American psycho. But he said, look, one of the reasons he played Ted was because he kind of looks like Ted. Uh, this was not his attempt to be like, now I'm a serious actor. Yeah. Um, but then he was like, I'm a huge fan of <laughs> James Hatfield. And then he had to come up and arrest me. And he was like, the first time he said his lines, he was like thinking. Uh, um, I love you. <laughs> you know, so James Hatfield was in the movie, which is a singer of Metallica. So the, then the first interview. I'm watching it and I go, holy shit. That's the director of Paradise Lost. Three part series. Yeah. Of West Memphis Three. Oh my God. That's the director, which had all the music from Metallica. Well, the director that directed all of Paradise Lost directed some kind of monster for Metallica. It was a documentary for Metallica. Yeah. So he was the director of this movie, of the Ted Bundy movie, and he put himself, you know, I'll just and and uh, so he was the interview. So the director of this new Ted Bundy movie was actually in the film, and that's also why um, James Hatfield was probably in the film as well. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And so. Yeah, and then you start thinking, ah, the movie was okay. It was definitely worth watching. And this guy has put out a lot of cool projects, and his, you know, subject matter is normally true crime. So, yeah, good for him. Let me read you this um, this comment by Accept Jenny here in, in the chat. She said, "I appreciate James Renner's reservations about it, how he is played by a teen heartthrob, and they didn't focus on the victims." Um. I can I can see those reservations, but at the same time, I I think I think it was I think he was the right choice. So Zach Efron was the right choice, and the only reason I'll say that is because I think the movie they tried to make the movie out to being okay. So we all we all, we all know Ted Bundy did it, right? Right. Um, well, some of us don't. I okay. guess. Because they didn't watch the end. I think people stopped and they didn't watch the end. And they're like, oh, maybe he's innocent. That's absolutely insane. Like, for realties? For realties. No doubt about it. He's guilty. But it it was, they. I could see how they made the movie um, out to being, it was basically how Ted Bundy saw himself, right? So he wanted to be in control. Yeah. He wanted to control the the, the narrative. Um, he wanted to control his image, and that is exactly what the movie was doing. Even though the the movie was inspired by um, by Liz, you know, in the book or you know, multiple books, right, right. It was still it was still Ted Bundy's show, right. Yeah, well, but what was also interesting, which I think, I really think like when people watch this back, because people normally watch true crime movies a couple times, I think when people watch this back, it will start becoming like a 3.5, so a 4 point. And the reason why is because there was something that was cool that kind of started out as more dreamy and like, oh, look at him and he's becoming the stepdad and all that stuff. And then it escalates and it gets more and more into the manipulation and more into more into wow he's a giant piece of shit ending you know which is great no it i mean you're you're absolutely right because the whole time it was weird like watching it and we actually watched it there a group of us on here that watched it through um rabbit together and we were just kind of 
talking about it. And, but it was so weird because like the whole time I'm watching it and you can't help but but feel for uh for multiple people in the movie. Even even the Ted Bundy character. Like you have some sort of you have some sort of hope that, you know, this guy can get his shit together and uh maybe he's not a terrible monster, even though you know he is and you know he did it, right? Right, right. No. So I think I found that much more interesting than a just straightforward movie is like, here's Ted Bundy, he's gonna, you know, he's a killer and he's a piece of shit. Here you go. You know, I, I liked I like seeing the uh seeing the, the multiple layers of the character. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I also think like the way it was shot, the ending, the way the ending was shot, like with the bad lighting mm-hmm. and his eyes were almost blacked out. Oh yeah. I mean, he looked I was waiting for his face to like morph into like a monster. I mean, it was really good. So I, like I said, I think the more people watch it, the more time goes on. I don't know what it's sitting at. Can you look up uh, what it's sitting at on like Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, let's find out. It was like, it was like around 70 last time I saw. Let's find out. Um, Rotten Tomatoes right now has it at. 57, 58%. Oh, I went yeah. down in the 60s. I, and I, you know what? And I think most people, I think, let's see what the, the biggest ones are. Let's see. Uh, okay. Like, I mean, is that critics uh, or is like, that? These are critics, right? So here's David Simmons from The Atlantic. It's hard to know if there'll ever be an essential and definitive fiction film about Bundy, but this certainly isn't. It's a, yeah. Well, that's not what they were trying to be, and that that look that drives me nuts about critics. Like, what was the movie trying to be? It was trying to give you the perspective of more from yeah. Liz, from that side. So, okay, 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 okay. So that's what it was trying to do. That's what it did. Rate it on that. I th- still say it's a three out of five, and I'm not sitting there saying, well, they should have had more information here, or they should have done more information here. No, I was saying the movie as far as like how it kept my interest there was no point other than at the end that i went oh this is good and if you're watching whatever you're watching whatever you're you know i actually just watched zodiac the movie with jake uh gyllenhaal four or five times during that movie i'm like this movie's good Mm -hmm. this movie's good and it only had that only happened at the end of this movie about ted bundy yeah. So, uh, yes, lady, you have to watch Zodiac. I now here. Okay, this is going to make it sound like it's a bad movie, but at the end of every night, I'd be exhausted, and I would start watching Zodiac, and I'd get about thirty minutes in, and then I'd pass out. Uh, but it was so good that I kept the next night fast forwarding to that part, start start from that part, and start watching, and then another thirty minutes, and I'd. It's a really freaking good movie. And what's so good about the movie is it's based off a true story, but it didn't have to be. It could have been a completely fictitious movie, and and it was just really... If, it, if anybody's seen the new Ted Bundy movie uh, and you would rate it, we're doing bottle caps. So I said three bottle caps out of five. So if you want to put your score for the Bundy movie on the chat room. I'd like to see them. Amanda agrees with me. Dappy? Is that Dappy? Is that Batman? Is Dappy Batman? Can I call Dappy Batman? You can now. Three and, three and a half. Aging Mr. Herman gives a good 2.5. That's saying not bad. Okay. Close. Ace gives a 3.5. I, you know, I, I could argue 3.5. Aging Mr. Herman. Argue. We watched it together. Why are you static? No, I've been trying to figure that out. That's why I've been going on mute. Hold on. You're like... Here, so, you keep talking, and, wait, and I'll on. fix I'll, it. I'll just do this with my... <laughs> that sound good? You guys like listening to our show? We, 
everybody's like, oh, please stop talking. This is awful. Batman. Dappy is Batman. Mr. Herman. Oh, I should welcome everybody to Butt Radio. I am your host. The captain with me, as always, is Morgan. Attic-y Morgan. Just breaking up the airwaves. All butts, all the time. It's 20, it's 27 degrees outside. It's 69 in my pants and, and 69 in Cherry's pants as well. Me and Cherry are going to take off our pants later in the chat room if you guys would like to be around for that. All the butts, all the time. Like Lady says, butts, 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 and more butts. It's backed up on the 405, and we have Batman, also known as Dappy. But yeah, we, we got all all kind of rated the same. So those are the critic scores. I'd like to hear if, if uh, Morgan, if you get a chance, yeah. I'd like to see what the audience is saying. Because fuck the critics. What's the audience saying? What's the people saying? I know. I'm surprised Paging Mr. Herman didn't give it at least a three. I mean, we watched it together and two and a half. And like, okay, when he was arrested and they, uh, you know, stripped him and he had his abs all out. That that's another half point, right? He, On oh butt. yeah, his butt and those abs. A... Man, those abs. That butt. Yeah. But I, you know, I had half chub on that butt. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not actually a butt guy. But that butt, um, that butt, you were. Yeah, I think the problem is, I, I think uh, Zach Efron is is a good looking guy. Obviously, um, I think the fact that he had the prosthetics, he had prosthetics in his mouth. I know that. Mm-hmm. I know he had a couple prosthetics on his teeth, and then he had a prosthetic on his nose and what was weird and maybe you could answer this the prosthetic actually changed his nose got better throughout the movie it did so it did and i think when people watch it back i don't know if it was a a mistake or or did bundy at some point were they doing that in in order to broken doing that in order to Kind of, because you know, people always said that, oh, he's a chameleon; he can always change his looks. But he really didn't. I mean, he could lose weight and gain weight. He could brush his hair one way or the other. But I don't think. I don't know. I have to. I'm gonna have to pull this up. Now. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Laura M is saying that I know it's considered junk science now. I, I no, I do not think the teeth. I don't think bite marks are considered junk science. If that's what you're talking about, Laura. See what Laura says. Not teeth. Hair is junk now. Oh, no. I think Paging Mr. Herman is saying uh, Zach Efron's hair is awful now. I don't know what's going on. Uh, what were the prosthetics? The, they had little patches that he put in his mouth that went up towards his cheekbones to make those stick out a little more and they had uh, prosthetics on his nose and then I think uh, a little bit on the teeth. Because... Oh yeah, you can definitely tell. Like I'm looking at these pictures of him and if you look at there's a picture of, of Zach Efron when he is in jail this is the scene where he's talking to Liz before he, he were... yeah. <sighs> Hacksaw, whatever, right? Oh, you can tell. I mean you just look at his nose. You can tell it's a prosthetic. Oh, right. But there was a, there was a scene where he was having sex, um, where like when he backed away from her, it didn't look like he had his prosthetics on. The, on. on and I, I just wonder if they, yeah. But I also wondered, did they just have to shoot something very fast? And so they didn't do it for one scene. Could, well, could be wrong. Yeah. Okay. And that, here, let's do this. Cause bring, since you brought that up, um, that that is something that actually did not happen. So his his wife, um, girlfriend slash, then to be like wife, did actually get pregnant at at some point, uh, but it wasn't until he was actually on death row. So mm. she did not. They did not have sex in the you know break room 
next to a Coke machine. Well, they might have. Just because you uh, have sex doesn't mean you're going. Well, to Well, in the movie, she did. Work. In the movie, she got. She was. Mm-hmm. Of course. But again, it's Here's a movie. Three of us it's not now. Uh, three of us now. One's one's in my vajayjay. Yeah. That's what. I'm gonna tell you one day. I'm gonna get drunk and go. There's three of us now. Ha ha hell. <laughs> now, did you have problems ha, with, with some of the casting? So, so, uh, the the boy from the Sixth Sense was was in it. So every time I saw him, I was thinking, Oh, that boy. That the boy still looks like he still looks like a baby. Yeah, like a big fat baby. He, I see dead people. Yeah, he, he's not as big as he was. He lost weight. So look, I'm not gonna no, fat no, shame no, anybody. No. He was great in the Sixth Sense. He was in a bunch of other movies. Um, if you saw the last, uh, here's what from somebody that fluctuates in yeah, weight, yeah. right? The, the fact that when I saw him at the end, like hug Liz, uh, yeah, Haley Joel Osborne, Osmond. I like the oh, yeah. what did Osborne. I say? Osborne. Osmond, Osborne, Osborne, <laughs> Osmond. Um, say whatever. Um, but uh, no, you know, I, I think you're right, but what I did like was when he hugged her at the end, I went. He's he's just a shorter guy. He's a little yeah. stocky. I wouldn't even call him. I'd say stocky. I wouldn't say fat. I don't want to, you know, fat shame anybody. I think that's wrong. I think uh, I'm sure he gets a lot of that. He looks different than when I. His body looks different than when he was a kid. But obviously, his um, his face is um, is hasn't changed enough. Yeah. Uh, it's like he used too much good moisturizer. He needs to smoke and be out in the sun. So, a baby with a yeah. beard. Yes. Did that that bothered you? I liked well, it. Why I liked it because the guy needs work, and I think he's a I'm good like, actor. I thought he did a good job. But I the whole time I'm thinking, I see dead people. That's all I see. And then the yeah, but you didn't even notice James. Hatfield. I know I missed him. But I can't. I, I I see dead people. That's all I saw. And then Carol Ann Boone. So this I don't know how 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 many people would oh. feel me on this because I don't know how many people actually watched it. But the girl that played are they feeling you? Girl that played Carol Ann. Are they feeling are you, you feeling? so deep? Are they feeling? Oh yeah, Sheldon. Are they feeling there. you so deep that there's three of you now? No. I thought Sheldon was great. Sheldon was great. What's his name in real life? But Sh- Sheldon. He's a good. Uh, his real name's not Sheldon. He's a good actor. When he said Jim, Jim Parsons. Parsons, yeah, when Jim Parsons said when they were getting married, Your Honor, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> that was one of the best lines of the whole show. Oh, come on, Your you Honor, gotta you gotta be kidding, be kidding me. me. And then he's like, Well, wow. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Malkovich, Malkovich was great. What a great uh, Malkovich judge. Malkovich was great. I love Malkovich. He was great. Oh, he was fucking fantastic. That's what I'm saying. The more I'm telling you. The more people talk about it, the more people dissect it, it's going to go up a notch. Yeah. A year from now, I'm going to be saying it's a four out of five. I fucking know it. And I'm going to be eat, I'm going to be Eden Crow. Malkovich. Malkovich was fucking amazing. Yeah. He, was. he was. Get some of that. And you know what? This could have been an easy this could have been a movie that he could have just, you know, uh mailed it in, right? No. This is obviously a, a, a <laughs> mail it in movie for some people. But he didn't. Hmm? He, did, he did a great job. I love that. Cherry just said, don't you, sh- you shake your, don't you yeah, shake your finger at man. me, young man. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and yeah, he's just saying lines yeah. that were actually in the courtroom, which was that's what I, I like the fact that they showed clips of the real Bundy and the real yeah. trial at the end. That was great. That was great because it made you go, oh, yeah, that 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 shit was really sad. Um, but no BS. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, I think by next year I'm going to be saying that it was a four out of five. What else is on the agenda tonight? Oh, that's where she was from. So that... Um, yeah, I agree. The, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so that the Carol Ann Boone... Uh, what's oh. her name? Kaya Scodelero. You probably didn't watch this, but she was in a, a show uh, called Skins, which was a English show for about ten years ago or something like that. 
And every time I saw her, that's all I could think of. I'm like, oh, she's the, you know, young girl from Skins. Because I think in this movie she was, or in the show she was like 14, 15, something. And, and hmm. I, and it was weird because like she was being, like they were sexualizing her in, in this TV sh- series. It was really weird. So like every time I saw her, that's all I could think of. I, those are the things I hate about some, like seeing some people in, in movies where, you see them and it takes you out of the movie for a, even if it's a brief moment, it just takes you out. Like, like, you know, uh, like I see dead people. Like it might, it wasn't the whole time, but as soon as I saw him, I was like, Oh my God, that's the kid from the sixth sense. And so that's all I'm thinking about. Right. But part of, right. But part of that is because you haven't seen yeah, them in a while. But then again, these are working actors. And I think there's a lot of people that, do good work they get typecast and then nobody type you know nobody puts them in anything ever again and they probably went hey Haley Haley Joel Osman he has some fans he probably has a good sized mm-hmm. Twitter account good sized Instagram let's put him in our movie yeah. you know what I mean and he's gonna tweet about it and get the word out also thought it was interesting that it was released in select theaters and Netflix. I find that interesting. Yeah, because well, why would you do that? When has that ever why happened? Would you do that? Yeah, I don't know. Cherry, I'm working on a documentary. I'm working on a documentary, Cherry. One day. One day. Now, was there anything in the movie that stood out where you, you shook your head or you thought to yourself, "No, that didn't happen that way," or something? Anything that you found strange? Oh, the main thing was just him walking past women and them turning their heads and being like, goo goo gaga, you know? Yeah. Oh, we need, we need to I mute. It. Boop. <laughs> oh, boop. Yeah, got it. Okay. Welcome to the show. <laughs> got got him. Uh, got yeah, him. I just thought that, um, I think the one thing that stood out, well, there was a few things that stood out for me. I think one was the, the scene, the scene where he, the second breakout, um, where he cut the hole through the the ceiling. So, the one thing that I found strange is they actually made it seem like he was like in a maximum sec- maximum security facility. You know, like he was in solitary confinement, and he, had, yeah, when he was really just like in the, you know, the basement of the county jail or whatever, and the hole that he 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 cut was, you know, I mean, we could have either me or you could have fit through it, but in real life, you know, he, the hole was tiny. He had, I think he had to lose like 25 pounds or something just to fit through it. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't show him losing, you know, 25 pounds. That's not going to make a good movie, but, um, yeah, I I think that's one thing that I saw. I was like, ah, that's not quite right. I mean, I, I know, I know it has no effect on, on the the movie at all but yeah there was um i i guess i wasn't that clear and i know we did a three-parter if anybody wants to listen to the three-parter that we did i'm gonna i'll look for it on stitcher to see like what um mm -hmm. wasn't that clear that she called i was really surprised that she that his girlfriend, um, single mother, called and thought maybe he was a suspect, and then obviously, she called multiple times. I wasn't. Uh, I I think I should. I guess I should have been more clear on that, and I, and I was. Yeah, she. Um, Liz called. So in the movie, they made it seem like she called once, and she's like, "Oh, I think it might have been him." She called multiple times. And said, hey, you need to look into this guy, Ted. And it was to the point where she was so, you know, suspicious of him that she, I mean, she found multiple things. She found a hatchet in his fucking Volkswagen. She found pantyhose. And I mean, so she knew something was wrong. It's not like she was, oh, I think it could be him. So I'm just going to call once and they're going to tell me, no. No, it, you know, it's 
not him. No, she called multiple times. And I think the other thing about it is they were saying that the the car color was wrong because at Lake uh, Shamantish, yeah, or Shemish, yeah, Shemish, yeah. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I think they actually thought the, the the Volkswagen Beetle was yellow. And it was more so like a cream. Wasn't that, it cream or? Well, his his car was a uh, tan, but the reason why you know they were calling those the Ted murders before they even knew it was Bundy because some of the eyewitnesses were like, "Hey, uh, we saw the girl that's missing. We saw them last with." A guy named that we met earlier named Ted. Yeah, he was introducing himself. So that's Ted. why they were calling him a fucking him. idiot, right? right? Well, they thought it was they thought it was a fake Boy. name. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, uh, yeah, they were like, yeah, it's a, it's a, he was using a fake name. So I think that was the other thing too. Was she was like, eh, his name is Ted. He has a Volkswagen. Like, he looks like the composite. He's a fucking hatchet in his fucking funny. Volkswagen. Oh, man see this is what i think about like all the time so okay so th- we did the episodes in 2016 god it feels like it feels like yesterday but that was a long time ago so episode 64 we called the ted murders that was about like the mamish some mamish some mamish some mamish some mamish lake some mamish oh, lake sammy so the so December 4th, 2016, because on the Stitcher app, download the Stitcher app, all the old shows are free and you just have to pick the year. So it's 2016, episode 64, we did the Ted murders. On episode 65, we did the Shy, um, Shy Omega killings. Um, oh. 66, we did... Ted Bundy and the Green River hey, Killer. Yap for two minutes by yourself. I, I'm getting called for something. Just give me, give me like two minutes. So, how are you, are you doing? Come yeah. help me with this thing. Okay. Yeah, give me two minutes. Yeah. Can you? Oh, we'll yeah. figure it out. Hope everybody's having a good day. It's happy Sunday. It feels like a Monday to me. But, uh, Gangster, Gangster's here. Sammy's here. Bees, B N C six two zero. I think it's a newbie. Could be wrong. Got to get a profile pic. Get a profile pic up in this. Up in this piece. Oh. <laughs> well, it is eight o'clock, so we could stop, or we could keep going. If I, we get a couple uh, hives, we'll keep going for a little bit. Plus. We, Plus, I think we should figure out if uh, every I I constantly wonder if we're going to have enough, you know, like we just made it to episode 300 and that took us what 16 or like the fourth year or so. So 300 episodes, fourth year, are we going to be able to make it a thousand episodes? True Crime Garage, a thousand episodes. Hmm. And I know there's enough crimes out there, but sometimes the crimes, there's not much to it, or there's not a twist, or there's not. I would love a cake for episode 2000. I probably want to eat it because I'd be afraid somebody poisoned me, but, you know. Shortage of crimes and missing persons. Somebody the other day actually sent me a comment saying, I know that you guys mostly do missing person cases. And I thought, how wrong are you? I also love when people say, I listen to every episode and then they make a statement that's completely false. Somebody one time said, I listen to every episode. I'm so surprised that Nick's a racist. And I'm like, it's definitely not a racist. But yeah, don't worry about that if you put your heart into the content. Now, we really kind of think, we try to think more about our energy these days. What's the energy of the show? Are we into what we're saying? Are we fascinated by the case? Are we pissed off about something? Obviously, these cases can make you mad. So you can hear in my voice right now. It's getting tired from 
talking all day and doing interviews this weekend and um to do an interview again tonight but that didn't work out so i gotta talk all tomorrow and then i have to do an interview tomorrow night i gotta stay up because uh the producer that i'm working with is coming in from nashville he's gonna get here he said about 1 a.m and um yeah <laughs> excuse me and uh we're gonna um uh, uh, am I excited about the EP? I'm I'm actually not excited. I'll be excited. That sounds bad, Jenny. I'm, I used to work in the studio that I, I record at now. I'll take a lot of pictures. I'll have uh, Morgan post a bunch of them here. Uh, I'll take some. And, and you can follow me at Captain Fat Hands uh, on Instagram because I'll, I'll put a bunch, um, a bunch of videos on, on Instagram. And so, yeah, the reason why I'm not super excited, I will be when we start recording, but all these songs are, um, all these songs are love songs. So the first EP that I put out that I ever let people actually hear my songs, cause I've been writing and recording songs since I was little. Uh, the first record I came out with what was called Tin Man. And Tin Man was basically because I went through this really rough period where I was married, I was raising our kids, um, and decided not to let me see them and not let me be a part of their lives, even though I didn't really, I didn't do anything wrong to to ruin the marriage. Um, so my heart was really not so much for the end of the marriage. That was sad, but the but losing these kids in my life, they were probably the greatest thing that happened to me in my life. And then, and then they're just not there anymore. And I would take them to school every day and I would lunches and it was these very simple things. But for somebody that I always wanted to be in a band and I always wanted to tour, and I always wanted to be a session player and just play music all the time. And I never really thought about having kids of my own. And I never thought like that I'd become like a dad figure and, you know, and let that be a part of my identity. And so I did. And, and I got really attached to him. And then that, excuse me. And so the first record was called Tin Man because in the wizard of oz the tin man wants to go ask the wizard for a heart and i thought that was like fitting for these like dark times so then the next record i made it um i am okay and i thought that was a fitting title because i went through a lot of depression and and had a lot of issues with getting on medication for depression and getting off of it and and trying to get all that stuff so the title of that ep is i'm okay and it's funny i was i actually went to get me and nick coffee this morning and i was listening back to that ep and it has a mixture of some stuff but there's a song that i wrote called hold on and it was talking about how you know the, the problem with depression is that you deal with it for so long so then when you your own life uh, a lot of people look look at that as a sign of weakness, and it's really it's a multitude of things. But a lot of those people were suffering for so long, so they were they were strong for so long, and then eventually they couldn't hold on anymore. The whole song was about how I started feeling better, and also just the idea that if you don't have the strength, that I can give you the strength hold on you know i'll let me carry this burden for a while and uh yeah it was anyways it was uh, so i am okay was the the name of the second ep and then i had all these tunes these like little love songs and so i decided to do another record which i have titled and i think it's a good fucking title uh i'm calling it oil can <laughs> Because 
in the Wizard of Oz, uh, the Tin Man, when he gets up, um, you know, like he can't move, they get the he says, oil can, oil can, and then they shoot oil all over him, and he starts loosening up, and that was kind of the idea about these new songs was some of them are are still kind of sad, but a lot of them are, you know, it's, you know, you got these scars on your heart and it's time to kind of move on. So I'm excited to do this because I've written all these songs for the last two EPs the same way. So all three of these EPs will sound similar and have a similar vibe, but I've started writing in a different way and want to kind of take on some different subject matter and, and things like that. And it's got heavy. Love songs. Yeah, I, I got you. Well, you left <laughs> and I got a sad. I'm so, sorry. I won't leave you again. That's what happens when you leave, Morgan. You need to start the sadness. You need to sing some more silly love songs to each other. What's some silly little love songs? Um, What's wrong with that? You know that was actually a, a talking shit song? Did you know? No. Yeah, because John Lennon and Paul McCartney were talking oh, shit back and forth yeah. to each other. And at some point he goes, oh yeah, he writes silly you know, love songs. So, uh, Sammy, I've, I've, I would love to try to do a rap record. I, I don't know how, if I'll ever be good enough Nick. at rapping. Yeah, I can't do it anymore either. So we have no the crime rap. No crime rap. This song's about Bundy. It's something for TCG that reminds um, Which is, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> Cause I'm a, that's what, he, that's well, what your influence is, because, right? Yeah, but what's weird is like, you know, here, like a lot of kids were gothic and I was really into music and I could actually play. I could play the bass and I could play different instruments. And there was a lot of kids that would wear black eyeliner and black fingernails and which is cool. That's yeah. fine. But they they used it as a way to be like, I'm more into this shit than you are. And. There was a bunch of girls. I, I won't say all their names, but uh, Thompson, Hodgson, oh, yeah. the, the group of hot Lots. girls. Right, we had this group of hot girls, and 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 our my buddy Paul was friends with them, and we went over. It was right when Hurt came out, and Hurt was on the radio a bunch. Mm -hmm. So I remember. Are you talking? I can't hear you. No, I'm listening. Are you now? Just, yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? So, okay. Yep. So Hurt came out. I sat in the next room listening to Hurt from stop to finish. Thought it was genius. Mm -hmm. The Attitude guitar was great. And the Attitude keyboards. And this is like at a time where like sound manipulation is a lot harder than it is now. I was always, I always, there was a lot of Nine Inch Nails songs that I dug. Which weirdly, if you listen to them, they're like actually very like positive, like like get your shit together types. Strange, because because like obviously Manson is not that way. Uh, so I was really fascinated by Manson, and if you watch, what's that documentary on uh, HBO? Um, it was, um, it was mainly about. Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. It's a four part series. And as much as they talk about Dr. Dre and as much as they talk about Jimmy Iovine, they talk a lot about Trent Reznor and Marilyn Manson. The, uh, the Defiant Ones? That one? The Defiant yeah. Ones, yeah. That's a great four part documentary. It's one of my favorite music documentaries of all time. But, um, yeah, I just, I love the textures. And so when I started really getting into like, oh, well, 
it's not just creating a sound or a song every week. Sometimes it's just creating a vibe. And so really getting into sound manipulation and stuff like that. I've been listening to a lot of what Trent Reznor does with Atticate, Atticate Fish. What, uh, I can't say his name. Atticus. Atticus. Atticus Fitch. His last name. Yeah, I mean, I've listened to a lot of Gone Girl soundtrack and a lot of um, what he did with. That's what's cool about Reznor, too, is sometimes he gets and you'll hear it on the second episode this week. It gets real dancey. I, I posted a little clip of what's going to be the song for episode two this week on on Instagram. Atticus Ross. Yes, he's a. Well, Trent gets a lot of credit, but Attic, Atticus should get more. But just like the track that we worked on uh, at my place, Morgan. What was that? Oh, he was doing so well. I'm back, Captain. Who is Atticus? Ah, there you are. You're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Well, now, what were you saying? What were you saying? <laughs> no, the track that we recorded at my house. Yeah. I mean, you did. That was great stuff. Um, it's more fun to um, bounce ideas off of each mm -hmm. other. And, uh, of course, Dappy's asking about James Mater Keenan. Of course, I mean you got love tool. Um, you know, and I think I think what what we did together. It was weird because like we were thinking, well, I mean, we did think musically, but I think we were definitely looking for a certain vibe, or we were. Yeah, I think we we're talking more vibe. Yeah, it was more yeah. vibe. It was more we were trying to. It was much more of a feeling than than a song that makes sense you know it was um we were looking for we were looking for something you know a certain sound but it wasn't the it wasn't the notes you know it wasn't the what what notes we were playing it was it was we had we had a feeling that we wanted to uh express and so we ended up doing that through the track we did and I, and this um this project too we got this thing we're hoping that it comes out um in september this project all i can tell you is that it's six part series i can tell you that much i know it's six parts morgan will probably be involved <sighs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, i haven't i haven't talked to you about this but there's I think 15 total characters. So there's definitely one of the characters I think you should nice. play. Nice. Um, I haven't figured which one out yet. but Old man. So it's a six-part series that True Crime Garage is going to be producing. So what I'm going to do is to do a full, whether it's three minutes, four minutes, or five-minute theme, I'm going to do a theme for each episode. And then also take the buffer music, you know, ins and outs of ads and things like that. And I'm going to compose it so it's start to finish. There's no stop. Oh, once I'm done with the six themes and the six kind of an outro music type things, you put it all together, it'll be a long piece. And so if each track is three to five minutes, you're looking about 40 minutes, 50 minutes, but it'll be constant from start to finish. And it, sketching out some ideas. Okay. Vibes, you know, like we we're talking yeah. about, like trying to do vibes. And uh, I'd, I'd like to have you help me on that, but I'd hate to say composed by Captain Ann. Um, I wouldn't. <laughs> no. Just, <laughs> that sounds good. Let's do that. 
And also, check this idea out. Oh. A water, lemonade, and it's just... Okay. So, check out okay. this idea. Oh, we do t-shirts. We're working with our company. And they're the same people that do ad agency. Yeah. Um, and so they have uh, a division that does merchandise. So we're working on, we want to do like a, a, every quarter come out with a new beer mug. Yeah. Or like beer glass. Or like maybe it's a shot glass this time. Or maybe it's a, a metal flask. And we'll come out with one. Which would be fun, right? Just a fun thing. And there will be limited edition. So, like, we're talking about, like, maybe a couple hundred of them, and that's it. So, if you get one, cool. And if you don't get one, uh, tough luck. We might do a thing where, like, every year or every two years we re-release some of the stuff so people can try to get the whole collection of them. So, that's cool. I'm excited about that. And I'm also excited to actually get coffee mugs that are for and or women and not just women coffee yeah. mugs even though i i i love the women <laughs> i love them. okay but um is what's cool they want to have us produce a bonus episode okay but we're going to but we're going to put it on vinyl oh Cool. That is actually that is cool. Yeah. So what's different about vinyl is that it's um I think only twenty minute twenty minutes per side. So the yeah. whole case has to be interesting and fit into a forty minute window. That oh so I think the vinyl would be that is cool. awesome. That would be that'd be awesome. I would buy it. Did you I say would it? buy it. Give you one for free, uh, though. Yeah, right? I mean, but wink, wink, I'll buy it. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink, you'll give it to me for wink, free. Wink. Um, okay, how about for that one? You you help me with the music for that one. Okay. I can do that. As long as you give me the whole B-side. <laughs> it's just, we just do the first 20 yeah. minutes. <laughs> then the next 20 minutes, just me like, hey, what's up? It'd be called <laughs> it'd be called things they fucked up on the B side. <laughs> yeah. Do I compose? No. Uh oh, you technically I, I mean you compose. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean Okay, technically, yeah. Should I put my new EP on vinyl? Maybe I'll put my new EP yeah. on vinyl too. Just to do it. It'd be fun, right? I think you should. Morgan doesn't compose, but he composes. You know, he like like, so, like that was the thing. Like so here, if you ask I wasn't okay, so I'll, you know, mm -hmm. we you were in you did your jazz band stuff and you you were in symphony, right? I think you, you played upright in orchestra. orchestra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was in band. Mm -hmm. Um, the thing about me is I never, ever, ever learned how to read sheet music. I can't read music at all. Uh, but I, I could, I only, I could play by ear. Uh, and I haven't, I can, I have an ear for it, but I can't sit there and tell you, okay, you need to play these notes or the, you know, here, do this chord. I can't do that, but I can, I can sit there and I can, I can, I can hear them, hear their music. I can hear music in my head all constantly. And I can hear, you know, I can, I can, you know, dictate to captain, like, this is what I'm thinking. And he knows exactly what, and that, that and was, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that was what was fun about uh, doing the song together is like, I know I'm composing it. I mean, or I'm picking the, the instruments, but it, it's somebody going, well, what about this? What about that? And then it becomes something that I would not be able to do by myself. Um, I, I, we should make a coffee mug that says, Captain loves women. 
<laughs> I'll be the coffee mug or a t-shirt. Captain loves women. No. Where are we at on a uh, on Morgan shirts? Oh, where what about making some before crime comes? Well, the Morganettes have some some shirts ready to go. Or, or we love you too. Oh. Yeah, no, but aren't we just gonna do just Morgan? That we we decided just let's just say Morgan. Well, well, with the Zodiac Killer, they had the one that said, uh, "I'm not Avery," and they had I, to wear badges because they wanted it. He wanted to. He he basically said that he was going to kill the reporter Avery. Yeah. So we could we could put we could make buttons or we could make T-shirts that say, "I'm not Morgan." Oh. I do like paging. Mr. Wait, I like no. paging Mr. Herman's idea. I'm excited because uh, so my my flight is finally booked for Crime Con, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to work on having rooms for us that Thursday, so we don't have to stay. But have you thought about going early? You thought about going Wednesday? Uh, no, I, 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 I third I'm Thursday, but I I I mean. Were you thinking Wednesday? You still might stay Sunday. Yeah, I might stay st- Sunday. It depends. Because it's one of those things where um, I think, you know, Sunday, I would have to leave late and then not get, get back until, you know, midnight or 1 a.m. But I think, I mean, honestly, it might be Thursday th- through, through Sunday. Because that's what you're doing, right? I'm doing Thursday through Sunday because even though I'll get back late Sunday, it's like uh, I can sleep sleep in, Monday, oh, true. which is good. Is he Mr. Herman's going to be there Thursday through yeah. Sunday? Are we going to hang out? Yeah. Are we hanging out? Is he Mr. Herman, I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Laura's going to be there Thursday <laughs> through, through Sunday? Laura's running her own house. Laura. Laura, can we get a couple of massages together, Laura? We'll go and we'll act like we're a couple. Uh, She'll take you to um, be fun. Uh, Colette's. Right, Laura? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to look that up. One, that, that one up later. So, uh, Paige, Mr. Herman, and Laura, we're going to go and say it's a couple's massage, but there's three uh, of us. We have. So, that'll be fun. Uh, Caitlin, who is not here tonight, she'll be there. Um, this is going brilliantly to be crazy group. 86 will be who is going to be here. What was that? Who else is going to be? Uh, who else is going to be at CrimeCon? That's here right now. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'll raise my hand. Brilliantly crazy. I don't even know how to do that. Wait, hold on. Let's see if I can do Wait, that. Wait, Amanda, is that a yes you're going to be there? Oh, yeah. It's supposed to <laughs> Nice. Uh, yeah, brilliantly crazy. Oh, yeah, so brilliantly crazy, from what I've heard, is she got, like, one of the VIP suites. Oh man, brilliantly crazy! Did you know that you can request to have like a one-on-one meetup with anybody from? She's Crime meeting Con? up with you in her room late at night. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't go into anybody's room. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I don't. I just refuse to. Amanda's going to be there too. All right, Amanda rocks. Hey, and you know what? If if you haven't. Signed up to go to True or to go to True Garage to go to Crime Con this <laughs> you year, a, you still have a chance and you can get 10% off by using promo code ECG19. ECG19. Crime Con 2019, the official sponsors of Captain and Morgan. But everyone's going alone. 
Yeah. So you you were asking me about Laura was saying something about butt radio at her place. All I said was, I can't guarantee it yet because I don't know what the schedule looks like. So possibly it's 60, 70% that we could do a butt radio live from Laura's place. Yeah. As long as Maggie can come with us. Yes. Maggie will want to come um, schedule is on crimecon.com. Maggie is going to be there. Um, turn 30 and she has now proposed to me like three or four times so we might be getting married. Oh, you know, if you were in Vegas with her now, you would be married. You'd probably be in Vegas, and uh, oh, but I'm going to be doing a ton of updates on the Instagram. So if you're not following Instagram or Twitter or anything like that, make sure you follow that because it's a ton of stuff this year, a ton of videos, a ton of story stuff, like. A ridiculous amount and i'm hoping there's a way that i can like then save it all and make it like a youtube video or something like that and just so and you still there we're talking about maggie what's the last name freeling right uh from the disappearance of maura murray yes she was the host of the disappearance of mara murray yes connect to and if you're not following uh, the Captain and Morgan show on Instagram, with that as well. All right, it's eight o'clock. I need to start wrapping it up, man. Oh man, you're out to, now. You're taking the no, place. no. I'm still here. I think. No, I'm here. Got to go to see so. You still here? You haven't left yet. Oh, I was going to say bye. Yeah. Sammy, bye. Okay, yeah, she said you can save the, st the stories as highlights on Instagram. Yeah, that for sure. Paging Mr. Herman. Yes. Yeah, there'll be some, uh, I'm sure there'll be some, uh, someone will have a uh, Facebook Live feed up or something That's for some of it. I can't wait to hang out with Paging Mr. Herman. Happy Batman. Glad you joined us. Lady, bye. Kitty, go, go, bye. Thanks so much for joining us. Laura, thanks for joining us. Paging Mr. Herman, grab a drink. Grab a chair. Laura, Dappy, Sammy, Perfect Idiot. Or can you go to sleep? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what else am I missing? Am I missing uh, anybody? Da, 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 terrific idiot. Sammy, Page Mr. Herman, Packer Girl. Oh yeah! Everybody, get ready missed, for Game of Thrones. Miss someone, Packer girl. Thanks for joining you us. Miss someone. Come on, uh, BNC six two zero Ace. Thanks for joining us. Who, who's what's the favorite? Your favorite name to say? And uh, paging Mister Herman. Nope, 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 nope. Or M. Oh. Les Clowns is in the house. <laughs> Les Clowns made it. Yes. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Yes, Les Clowns is in the house. Clowns in the house. Les Clowns in the house. Oh. Uh, Kitty Go Go. What's the What's the one above that? Harley Quinn Forest. Harley Quinn Forest. Jenny, thanks for joining us. Jenny was very talkative today. Thanks for being so talkative, Jenny. Love you all. And uh, uh, just tell Morgan when we uh, when we should be back. 
and we'll be back this and week. If you know Tommy Davidson, let him know we said hi. Yeah, if you know Tommy Davidson, tell him we're looking, looking for him. him. Looking for Tommy. I'll see you guys later. Ha ha hell. <laughs> Some black cat. All right. Bye bye. bye.